Tonight, Donald Trump is on his way back to his home in Bedminster, New Jersey, after his third arraignment. The former president facing four criminal counts related to efforts to overturn the 2020 election in this indictment. But on social media, he's out now telling his supporters, quote, it's a great honor because I'm being arrested for you. I need one more indictment to ensure my election. And in that case, he's obviously referring to the state of Georgia. Joining us now, Stephanie Grisham, former Trump White House press secretary who resigned from the Trump administration on January 6th, and Olivia Troy, who worked in the Trump White House as Homeland Security Advisor to Vice President Mike Pence. So, Stephanie, Kristen Holmes has been traveling with Trump today, uh, all day in that, in that motorcade. And the former president's advisors are telling her he's defiant, ready to fight. That's what they're saying. But the demeanor that she saw throughout the day was different. And Trump's statement, of course, when he gave it was terse and extremely short, less than a minute. He did not take questions, even though she and other reporters had been told that he would. What does this tell you? Well, I mean, this is what we were always told to do. You put on a front that we're going to fight, that we're fighting for everything for everybody. We're fighting for the little guy. Um, but I, too, when I saw him get out of the car, I immediately knew with his body language that he wasn't happy. Before he even started talking, I could tell that he wasn't happy. Um, and the fact that he didn't take questions also, you know, it struck me. I have a feeling with this one, um, you know, this is third time's a charm, I suppose, not to make light of it. But with this one, I think he's recognizing that with this particular judge, he doesn't have control. He's not going to maybe have control of the calendar. Not that he has control with the Florida case, but I could see in his mind him thinking that with that judge, since he appointed her, maybe she'll be, uh, you know, go a little softer on him, which I'm not inferring. I just have a feeling today he understood the gravity of what is about to happen to him and that he can't control it. And Olivia, to that point, Evan Perez was also in the courtroom. He reports Trump had his head down, that his hands were clasped. Um, you know, Trump has warned in the past of potential death and destruction if he's indicted. And today he called the indictment the persecution of a political opponent. Um, so, so what does it say to you? You know, you combine that body language in the courtroom with the fact that, you know, as he drove in, it wasn't even like what he saw in Mar-a-Lago, right? It wasn't overwhelming there, but there were plenty of Trump supporters there. There were, there were almost none there today. I mean, he didn't have that sort of, um, that fuel that feeds him. Yeah, look, I think it sounds like this is someone who privately feels defeated and knows that accountability is starting to ca finally catch up to him. And I think in terms of, you know, not seeing as much support in him, his supporters, uh, many of them, you know, who have gotten in trouble with the law because of this man have learned that, you know, nobody's going to be there for them in the end. That's not who Donald Trump is and their face to face, you know, accountability on their own. But I'll say today, Looking at, you know, today and watching this, um, I'm, I'm glad to see that this is a first step towards holding a man who basically, who's, whose entire presidency was full of alternative facts, to quote his own, you know, advisor, Kellyanne Conway, and those alternative facts have finally caught up to him. So, Stephanie, you know, in your last role in the Trump administration was chief of staff to the first lady, Melania Trump, and obviously she was not there today. In fact, she has not appeared with him at any of his three arraignments, right? We just we just haven't seen her. Uh, Trump mentioned her in a recent interview, though, and here's what he said. It's always unpleasant when you have to go in and tell your wife uh, that, by the way, uh, tomorrow sometime I'm going to be indicted. And she says, for what? I say, I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea. So Stephanie, you know her well. You know that she's well aware of the, the power she has, the influence she has um, with him. What do you make of her silence? I actually don't make anything of it. That is Melania Trump, you know. Um, she is saying in, in her mind, you know, this is his issue. He can deal with it. He doesn't need me there to prop him up. Um, and, you know, I'm too busy to to go with him. And that's who she is. She will show up by his side when she wants to, uh, when she's perfectly ready. I doubt, you know, that audio you just played, if that conversation even happened, which yes, I right. wonder if it even happened. She knows. She knows when he's going to get indicted. She knows what's going on. She watches uh, media as much as he does. And so she absolutely knows what's going on. <laughs> Interesting. So, Olivia, um, your uh, former boss, Mike Pence, is now fundraising off of this. Try to jump in on this. Of course, no doubt Trump will as well. But uh, making this campaign merchandise that says too honest, uh, referring to the January 1st call that he had with Trump, right? We're, we're, we're in the indictment, it says Trump berated him for not going along with efforts uh, to, to um, you know, reject the election, telling him, quote, you're too honest. And um, he also is taking, uh, going after Trump, 
calling him a, a person who relied on a whole bunch of crackpot lawyers. So he's definitely speaking out now in a way we haven't seen before. What do you think about how he's handling this? Obviously, he's also now running for the GOP nomination. Look, I think it's finally happening. Uh, he needs to be separating himself from Trump. I think he's right to run with that. I think, you know, wear that as a badge of honor to be called too honest. I think, you know, Pence should run on the Make Truth Great Again campaign. I mean, we need to be talking <laughs> truth here. And that would be to his benefit. Uh, look, I, you know, I actually have have seen this dynamic before between Trump and Pence. Um, I saw it, honestly, during the COVID pandemic where Pence was at times too honest. His com his press conferences were going a little too well and too factual. And Trump was annoyed and got upset with him. And then the next thing you know, Trump showed up and was derailing conferences and telling people mm. to go ingest themselves with bleach. So this is this is not a surprising dynamic to me. But I, I think that Pence needs to continue to be more forceful and pave a different path. And I would hope that he would lead the GOP uh, completely down another direction, which I've been wanting him to do for the, you know, over two years now. All right. Olivia, Stephanie, thank you both. Truly historic developments. Donald Trump has been arrested and arraigned. Remember, arrested and arraigned in three separate state and federal cases and faces a possible fourth indictment in Georgia. Brian Todd is keeping tabs of all of the criminal indictments and investigations surrounding the foreign president. Brian's joining us right now. Brian? Well, Wolf, all of these cases can be really dizzying, so we wanted to update our viewers on all the cases and what comes next. Uh, there are a total of four cases that the president has been investigated in, uh, three of which, as we know now, that he's been indicted in. We have the uh, special counsel for January 6th case that he was just indicted in today, um, and he has pleaded not guilty to all of these cases. There is also the um, Mar-a-Lago documents case that he was indicted in a short time ago. He's uh, pleaded not guilty to that one as well. Uh, he was also indicted in the Manhattan DA's case in New York City. That's the hush money case where he was charged with uh, uh, falsifying documents in relation to hush money payments uh, to Stormy Daniels and to uh, Karen McDougal. Uh, one case, though, that has not uh, come down yet, which could come soon, is the grand jury investigation in the state of Georgia, where Fonnie Willis, the uh, Fulton County DA, uh, has been investigating him. Uh, that could come down uh, pretty soon that we're not quite sure that could come down uh, this month. We're going to take a look at this month because this is where the next, um, you know, operative dates come into play here. Uh, the second Mar-a-Lago arraignment is scheduled for August 10th. That's a week from today in a, court, a courthouse in Florida. But Donald Trump is not necessarily expected to attend that hearing. Uh, as far as the Georgia case, we're told that that case could actually come down on any uh, uh, of these weeks in August, possibly next week, or possibly either of these weeks uh, coming up. That, that's when Donald Trump could be actually indicted in that case. Now let's take a look at uh, the uh, political calendar here, Wolf, is that kind of, you know, a lot of this overlaps with the political calendar. March 2024, let's look at that. Super Tuesday is on Tuesday, March 5th. There are several primaries scheduled for that month of March as well. Now, the Manhattan DA trial, that's the hush money case involving Stormy Daniels. That is scheduled to begin about three weeks after the, um, the uh, hush money case in New York on March 25th. But again, several primaries in the month of March, including Super Tuesday. In May of 2024, that's going to be a busy month as well. You've got the uh, Mar-a-Lago classified documents case, the pretrial hearing scheduled for May 14th. Uh, the trial could begin as early as May 20th. There are several primaries in the month of May as well. And the GOP nomination deadline is May 31st. So that's the, these are some of the operative dates we'll, that we're looking at in all of these cases. Busy primary season and a busy uh, court docket for the former president uh, at that time, too. Also, the uh, one of the key dates is August 28th, when this case that we, he was just indicted in the January 6th case, that's the next a court date where they could set a trial date to start for that case, Wolf. We'll watch it all unfold. Brian Todd, thank you very much. I want to bring back our political and legal experts for some more analysis right now. Laura Coates, this is a complicated legal web. Mm -hmm. How does what's going on today compare uh, to all the other legal cases that Trump is now facing? This is likely viewed as the most significant as it goes to the core of the democracy. And obviously, he's running to lead the government again as the president of the United States. But two things to look out for from here on out based on those dates. Venue changes or motions to try to change the venue out of areas he might not find favorable. And also, how do you find a jury in the whole voir dire process? You're thinking about all those things right now.
join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the Macad TV family. Please like and share Macad TV. We love you all. Please support Macad TV Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.